Oh, hello. Today we're going to dive deep into ritualizing and experiences. Let's talk about experiences first. Um, there are only three experiences that you can have when you meditate. They are, we could have thoughts, we could fall asleep, or we could experience stillness. Everything else is some version of these three things. In addition to obviously the object of our attention, which is uh, watching our breath or repeating a mantra or gazing at something or listening to something, whatever that object of our attention actually is. So everything falls into the category of thoughts ultimately. So let's say my stomach is gurgling, ultimately that physical sensation or my knees are aching because I've been sitting in position for a really long period of time or um, I have a stiffness or a soreness or some type of physical or emotional pain. Ultimately, these all trickle down and distill into thought. We have 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. That's one thought every 1.2 seconds. They're coming. You will not stop them. And placing your hands like this or doing whatever, the thoughts are still going to come. Now, one of the things that uh, you could also do when you meditate is fall asleep. And there are two reasons for falling asleep. One, we're tired. Two, we've relaxed ourselves enough, relaxed, calm the mind, relax the physical body, enough to surrender and fall into sleep. We might see colors. We might see anything. We might see videos or still images, people we know, people we don't know. We may um, see, in fact, colors. And obviously, if we see red, that's the root chakra. That means there's some type of energetic movement in regard to our groundedness, our centeredness, our community, our family, our connection to the world outside of us. If we see orange during the meditation, it means there's some type of energetic movement regarding our creativity, a new path, a new direction, a new mindset, a new belief that we may be chewing on or struggling with. If we see yellow in the meditation, that's the Manipura, that's typically our power center, and it means there's some energetic movement regarding our following through, perhaps on something that we began in that second chakra. Uh, if we see green, um, that means there's some aspect of energetic movement regarding forgiveness, compassion, kindness, could be self or to others. Um, if we see blue, that's our throat, that's our ex permission and expression. So there's some kind of energetic movement regarding you biting your tongue, expressing yourself, stepping into your power, holding back, letting go, whatever that is. You probably know what it is. Interestingly enough, that, that throat chakra, the Vashuddha chakra, has two potential um, qualities. One is permission and the other is expression. So that's a really interesting conversation there. Uh, if we see purple, that's essentially uh, regarding our trust. Perhaps we have been not trusting enough. Maybe we've been making decisions too much through um, fear or desperation. And if we see white, that's our connection to source. Maybe this is the development and cultivation of our spiritual practice. Maybe it's our um, connection to the divine, whatever that is. Now, a lot of people say, what are you talking about? I, I don't see colors. I never see colors. I always meditate in black and white. And I would say, oh, contraire. Because in Tibet, the color for the uh, anahata, the heart chakra, is actually, it's not green. It's uh, black and pink. So if you see pink, it's the you know forgiveness, compassion, kindness, um, love center. If you see black, same thing. And if you see black and white, that means it's there's some energetic movement regarding your heart, as well as some type of energetic movement regarding your connection to source. So whether you're seen in color or whether you're meditating in black and white, it means there's some type of energetic aspect. What are the physical sensations we can have? A lot of people express, uh, they feel a tingling tingling in their hands, tingling in their belly, tingling in their third eye, tingling in the crown of their head. Typically, I think this is probably uh, stress release 
this is stress dripping off of us. And so I say, cool, rock on. Keep enjoying that. Remember, if something cool or kooky happens during the meditation, you'll probably come back to experience it again. Don't try to make that happen. It didn't happen because you were trying. It happened because you were fully surrendered. But um, cool, you'll, maybe you'll come back tomorrow. Some people experience hot or cold. Some people say they experience movement. And a lot of times people claim they're experiencing some type of gyroscopic movement, but if we would sit and meditate with them, they're not moving at all. It's just an energetic um, expansion. You know, it's, it's beautiful, but we're not trying to achieve it. And the funny thing is, you feel it, but there's nothing physically going on. It's purely energetic. So we could fall asleep. We could experience sensation. Um, and again, back to sleep for a moment. So many people are like so upset with themselves because they fall asleep. Don't beat yourself up for anything that happens during the meditation. Whatever happens in the meditation, cool. Now, obviously, if you always fall asleep during the meditation, uh, it means that you're probably not getting enough sleep. So we want to give ourselves permission to have whatever experience possible. But if we're always falling asleep, maybe we have apnea. Maybe some turbulence is keeping us up all night. And this is a tip-off that maybe we should um, sit up a little straighter or lean against a wall, not recline. Um, I really encourage people always just to elevate just a little bit. Otherwise, we have that Pavlovian connection between sleep and laying down flat. And so that's a, it's an interesting um, aspect that many people have. Thoughts, sleep, stillness. Now, what's that stillness? That stillness could be for a millisecond, or that stillness could be for an extended period of time. We don't judge that. Again, uh, in Sanskrit, that's referred to as Atma Darshan. Atma Darshan, glimpsing the soul. And it's glimpsing because we're still... And we see that for a second from a state of witnessing awareness. But as soon as you start having an experience, it, that's a thought. And so when I'm working with psychics, mediums, clairvoyants, you know, people who are highly intuitive or highly sensitive, they may close their eyes to meditate and suddenly start having some type of external experience, receiving energy or voices or messages. At the same time, they may be having conversations with things outside of them. It's a basic rookie mistake with people who are on that uh, intuitive, empathic um, journey. We want to have a meditation practice whole and in and of itself, so that when we then sit down to channel, to receive, to connect, we're coming from such a deep space of stillness and silence. We really have cultivated our ability to witness. But if every time you close your eyes, suddenly you start having conversations with other realms, you're really not meditating. And so for those who I've trained over decades, decades, regarding their empathic um, qualities or their uh, gifts, uh, whether they be psychic or clairvoyant or clairsentient or uh, mediumship behaviors, First, we have to own our meditation practice. Then our other practices, whatever they are, will thrive around us. Hopefully, this is helpful. If you have any questions about this, I'd love to hear about what your practice is and what, how you start your day each day. And um, any questions about any aspect of either experiences or ritualizing your practice, I'd be really interested to know. So keep it up. Keep meditating. Keep it going, and um, I'll see you in the gap. Namaste.